And this is the boring news from Radio Underland, where it's not funny and we just read it the way it is, kind of like NPR. Yeah, it's that bad. It really is. So most of you are going to be listening to this on your way home. And so, uh, you know, happy Friday to everybody. Most of our listeners are here in Southern California, and I'm sure you're going to be sitting in a lot of traffic. And, uh, you know, heads up, weekend is here. We're going to have some fun. Anyways, in the news, today is Friday, June 21st, 2019. And here we go. One of the seven Bibles owned by Abraham Lincoln will go on display for the first time at his presidential library. It was given to the Minor family by his widow, Mary Todd. Historians speculate she wanted to ensure he was remembered as a devout Christian, as many speculated at the time he was an atheist. The Bible has been passed down from the Minor family through the years and has now requested it be made public. In old-school extortion racket mafia-style tactic, the Los Angeles City Council is debating a tax on vacant units paid by landlords. Their economic theory is bonkers. By penalizing empty homes, landlords will bring down their prices to make the units more affordable and help alleviate the rampant homelessness problem there. Uh, This is insane. You know, when a group of pol- corrupt political officials start taxing and fining people to curb their behavior, it, this is just ridiculous. You know, if you're listening to this now and you agree that the L.A. City Council uh, is, the, the, is, a, is appropriate in even thinking about doing this, you are a freedom-sucking, ignorant asshole and the reason why California is in the shitter. Anyways, on to more news. Fucking assholes. Cameron Powers was on the run for four hours after crashing a car in a high-speed chase with police when he moseyed on to 75-year-old Marcia Black's property. She greeted him on the front porch with a rifle. He asked if he could use her phone. She declined, and when he kept walking closer, she fired a warning shot. Black told the local CBS affiliate, I didn't intend to kill him. I just wanted him to think I would shoot him. He realized I meant business, so he got down on his knees. Meanwhile, her grandkids inside had called 911. Deputies arrived. Powers ran, but was quickly apprehended. For those of you keeping score, law-abiding citizens with guns, one point. Unarmed criminals, zero. A bevy of political media companies are joining forces to get back the ad dollars taken by sites like Facebook and Google. Right Wing Daily Caller and Washington Free Beacon are teaming with Lefty, Raw Story, Alternet, and Mediate to sell advertising packages to advertisers looking to reach a politically engaged audience. Digital advertising spending in the 2020 election cycle is expected to hit nearly $3 billion. That's how much these shit-for-brains politicians are spending to get in front of your face and spew false campaign promises. I suggest we impose a lying tax on politicians at the end of their term. Every unfulfilled promise gets a $1 million fine for lying to the public. Maybe it would generate some resemblance of campaign honesty. The Tampa Bay Rays have been given approval to seriously explore a plan that would have them play home games in both Tampa Bay and Montreal. The first half of the season would be played in warm Tampa and the second half in Montreal, which hasn't had a team since the Expos moved to Washington, D.C. in 2005. It'll take a couple years to figure it out, but it's a situation on the table. So let me just put this out there. If this bi-country baseball team was to make it to the World Series, which national anthem do they play? It seems like even our professional sports teams are beginning to have a identity crisis. The S&P 500 closed at all-time high Thursday at 2,954 points. The Dow picked up nearly 250 points on the day at 26,753. So if you're a wealthy one percenter that ignores mainstream media and are taking advantage of the boost in the economy, then the congratulations is in order. The weather company is predicting a very hot summer for the coast, while central states can expect a more mild summer and fall fueled by record precipitation. August and September will be the hottest months for the coast, so all of you left coasties may want to stock up on gold bond powder because this summer is going to be a ball dripper. The American Osteopathic Association is out with a study that beagles can detect lung cancer in blood samples with 97% accuracy. The same methodology will be used to see if the dogs can detect other cancers, 
The researchers will try to figure out exactly what the pooch, po- pooches, pooches, yeah, that's a flub. I'm not going to edit that out. Exactly what the pooches are smelling. Thursday was a day of tension between the U.S. and Iran, especially behind the scenes at the White House. The Islamic Republic shot down an American surveillance drone operating in international airspace early in the day, prompting outrage from U.S. officials and even, as some sources claim, pushing President Trump to authorize retaliatory strikes. As late as 7 p.m., strikes were in the cards and some planes were even in the air, but the whole thing was called off. It's still unclear what the decision-making process was. Meanwhile, other reports show an evolution in President Trump's thinking about the attack. Trump says Iran made a very big mistake, Trump said about the shooting down of a U.S. drone. He apparently came to believe the attack wasn't intentional. Trump says, I find it hard to believe it was intentional. Trump later said those comments could signal the president's softening opinion about the strike as the day went along. In other words, no World War III yet. Well, not just yet. The U.S. Supreme Court rejected an effort to tear down a giant cross-shaped monument honoring World War I in Maryland. The case is viewed as a landmark in the battle between atheists who hate religious symbols and normal people who view monuments to the dead as valuable historical landmarks. The cross was built nearly a hundred years ago, and that gives it importance beyond just being a religious icon. And that's what Justice Samuel Alito wrote in his majority opinion. While building new religious monuments on government property might be a different situation, the court ruled 7-2 to that the cross monument does not violate the Constitution's clause prohibiting the establishment of a national religion. The U.S. Border Patrol is documenting record high escapes by illegal immigrants as its agents are pulled from enforcement and into humanitarian duties guarding overflowing detention camps. These escapees, known as gotaways, are the illegal aliens in question's who agents find out about but didn't manage to stop from crossing the border illegally. More than 100,000 gotaways evaded the Border Patrol and snuck into the interior of the country in a recent report, the highest level in five years. But this whole thing that I just read is bullshit because it doesn't say 100,000 over what time frame. It's just throwing out numbers, typical media nonsense. Despite a spate of ugly polls for President Trump, Pierce Morgan is confident the president is well-positioned to win in 2020. The former liberal foe saw something in Trump's re-election announcement on Tuesday, a renewed sense of energy and campaign swagger. This is what drove him to the victory the last time around. Not to mention, Morgan points out his approval rating of about 44%, while it's not excellent, is much better than the 37.5% approval that he had the day before the election in 2016. In short, don't underestimate Trump. Weirdo Roy Moore will run again for U.S. Senate in Alabama, despite nearly universal opposition by Republicans, including President Trump. The candidate, who's lost a deep red Alabama seat formerly held by Jeff Sessions to Democrat Doug Jones, said on Thursday he plans to make another run. Despite his campaign crashing and burning after a number of allegations of him creeping on young women. Can I win? Yes, I can win. Not only can I, but they know I can. That's why there's such opposition. That's what Moore said at a launch event. That makes sense because, of course, Republicans don't really want to win back a critical Senate seat in a state they practically own. Hollywood elites are split on Pete Booty Gag. Booty gag, buddy gag, buddy gag. I don't know what that last name is, but Pete, we'll just call him Pistol Pete. More specifically, the gay literati in Tinseltown have yet to be sold on the openly gay mayor of South Bend, Indiana. He's a rising star in the Democratic Party. Some are concerned he's not seasoned enough, but are willing to invest cash in a future candidate. Others think he can take down stalwarts like Joe Biden. Some simply are taking the safer course of giving money to more established candidates. Anyway, for a candidate who purports to represent the Rust Belt cities like the one he's mayor of, maybe Hollywood isn't the best place to be knocking on doors for donors. 
Tube Talk. Here's what's new to watch tonight. Whistleblower is on 7 p.m. on CBS. Marvel's Agents of the Shield, 7 p.m. on ABC. And on the late shows tonight, Jimmy Kimmel will have uh, Christina Applegate uh, with musical guest Rob Thomas. Jimmy Fallon will have Tina Fey with the Nickelback of country music, Florida Georgia Line. Stephen Colbert will have Naomi Watts and the Raconteurs, Seth Meyers, Jim Gaffigan. James Corden will have a bunch of people that I've never heard of except Blackpink, the Asian pop sensation. Sensations. It's like an all-girl group. They p- performed at Coachella. A car slammed into the perimeter wall of Bob Barker's Hollywood Hills home on Tuesday. The vehicle, which was involved in a collision on the street, was sent flying into Barker's wall. The Price is Right host was safely inside his home at the time of the crash. Post Malone is living his best life in South Africa. The singer who was there to perform at the Castle Light Unlocks Hip Hop Experience in Johannesburg decided to get all touristy and check out some wildlife. Post Malone hung out with some cheetahs, fed giraffes, and snuggled up with a lion cub. A crew member working on the Witches reboot starring Anne Hathaway was stabbed during a confrontation with a co-worker. The incident reportedly took place at one of the stages at Warner Brothers Studios in England. The victim was taken to a hospital and the suspect was arrested. In an emotional tribute video, Granger Smith spoke candidly about the night his three-year-old son, River Kelly Smith, passed away. The country singer said he was watching his daughter do gymnastics in the yard and remembers thinking, soak up these moments because it's not going to last. The next thing he knew, he was doing CPR on River, who had fallen into the pool. The toddler was rushed to the ER, but doctors were unable to save him. Granger is now telling fans, don't feel sorry for us because we feel very blessed. We had an incredible little boy for three years. We are going to live out our best lives. He also announced that he and his family will be heading back on the road to continue his Win Good Guys Win tour. Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis set the record straight on the ridiculous rumors that they have split up. The actor posted a video of the two mocking the headlines with the caption, I guess it's over. Maybe next week my wife will be having twins for the third time. But who's counting? Chrissy Teigen was mom shamed for taking her daughter to the dentist. The model who shared a video of daughter Luna at her first dentist appointment was criticized over the fact that she waited until her daughter was three to take her to the dentist. Some moms did come to the 33-year-old's defense explaining why they too waited until their kids were a little older to get their teeth checked. This is hardly the first time Chrissy was criticized over parenting decisions. She was shamed over Luna's hair and putting her child in a helmet. Okay, let me get this straight. She put her kid in a helmet to help fix the shape of his head. So it wasn't a medical condition. This was totally cosmetic that she put her son in a helmet to fix the shape of his head. Well, how about this, Chrissy Teigen? Posting your personal shit all over the internet for people to criticize. Then you won't be in the news, dumb cunt. Following reports of her MTV show being canceled and her Mykonos Beach Club looking dark and deserted, Lindsay Lohan is cleaning the air. The actress took to Instagram where she told these writing about her situation to chill out, specifically calling out page six. She went on to explain that the club is moving locations in the world and has a new focus on working with children. She added that she wants to spend more time with the family, too. The world will just have to wait and see what happens next. So let me get this straight. Lindsay Lohan is moving her beach resort to another location and is going to focus on kids that attend a beach resort? God, she's dumber than she looks. Matt Lauer did not have a single mention in NBC's highlight video honoring the Today Show's 25-year history. The co-host who worked on the show for 20 of those years was nowhere to be seen in any of the footage. Matt was fired by the network in 2017 for sexual misconduct. Lisa Vanderpump is taking some time away from filming Vanderpump Rules as she mourns her mother's recent death. Lisa's rep told E! News that the reality star has temporarily stepped away from Bravo to grieve her mother. Sources close to the reality star say she is shocked and devastated. Her mother's death comes a year after her brother's death by suicide. The season four premiere of Riverdale will pay tribute to the late Luke Perry, 
the creator of the series, Roberto Acquire Sacasa, or something like that. Put it in the comments phonetically if you know how to say that name. Anyways, he took to Twitter to share the news, writing probably the most important episode of Riverdale. This is a tribute to our fallen friend, and we're thankful for this opportunity to honor Luke and Fred. He added, the title of the episode will be called In Memoriam. Kendall Jenner Stalker is missing. The 38-year-old Canadian citizen who was uh, deported earlier this month has gone off the radar, and officials are concerned he is trying to make his way back to the U.S. and Kendall. John Ford was deported after ICE arrested him in New Mexico. He was arrested multiple times last year after he repeatedly scaled the hill to get onto Kendall's property. Maybe this is a sign that Trump needs to build a wall on our Canadian border. Just thinking out loud here. Today, the day of the year, is the day to take your dog to work. It's also Selfie Day, International Yoga Day, World Giraffe Day, Peaches and Cream Day, World Motorcycle Day, and Take Back the Lunch Break Day, which I have no idea what that means. If you're celebrating any of those days, congratulations to you. Birthdays today, Lana Del Rey, pop singer, is 33 years old. Edward Snowden, the CIA employee who leaked National Security Agency tactics, tactics is 35. America's favorite faker of hate crime, Jesse Smollett, is 35. Prince William, the Prince of England, is 36. Chris Pratt from Parks and Recreation, Guardians of the Galaxy, and Jurassic World is 39. Juliette Lewis, the actress from Cape Fear, Natural Born Killers, etc., is some other age years old, but I just lost my notes. She's 45. Anyways, this has been the Unfunny News with Radio Underland. This is Jake talking to you. Uh, our funny show comes up this Tuesday at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. It'll be live streaming on Facebook. Uh, you can tune in. I believe that we have a special guest band, uh, Yesterday's Donuts. That's going to be on the show. I don't know who our other guest is. But that's going to be this Tuesday at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on Facebook Live. And it'll be rebroadcast on YouTube, etc. Uh, once again, I'm going to close this out. Since this is Friday, everybody's here to party. I'm going to close this out with Shut Up Sean's song, the hit single, the song that everybody wants to hear, Party. Tell him, Sean. Tell him. Now give it a rest. I don't want to hear about all that stuff. But he said, she said, I don't care about that. Stop talking about other people, man. Small, small. Big minds don't do that. Come on, you're better than that now. Plus, it's Friday night. We're out to have a little fun. Roll your spliff, smoke it too. Crack a drink, knock it back with you. I came here to party. How about you? You want to dance? Oh, no. It's okay. I'll ask your friend too. We're gonna party, that's what we're gonna do We're gonna party, how about you? I'm gonna party Gonna dance my step two Get my moves out on the floor Show this girl what I could do Hey, hey, you looking at me too? You wanna party with me? Cause I'm ready to party Party too. I wanna party with you. It's that time of the week, that's what I do. I let it loose, I hang it down, I dance all around. You're afraid to dance? What? No, oh, man, come on. Let it go. That's when these fine ladies right here. Get in the middle, show them what you can do. Cause I came here to party, that's what I do. Hey, you wanna party with me too? I came in a party, how about you? Oh man, leave that nonsense at the door. He said, she said, what are you gonna do? Wrapped up in all that little gossip you do. Man, that's so small of you. Grow up. Talk about better things. We came here to party. Roll your spliff too. Knock back a drink or two. Do your little favorite thing you do. But just relax and stop talking about other people like you do. We came here to Party, that's what we do. Get your ass on the dance floor and do the do. Party, that's what we do. Party, hey, how about you? Oh, and a party, that's what we do. It's Friday night, now let it go too. The 
Hey, that's what I do. We're gonna 